data okay data is something that is so valuable so once we get the data everything is going to fall in place if you know how to organize it and how to work with it okay, let's share screen <coughs> I just chose very simple tools. So I'm just going to use Notepad and Paint to give you more details on ML. Okay. So the first major classification is AI, which is artificial intelligence. From there, we're going to learn ML. In ML, we classify it as three major classifications. The first is supervised learning. Right. The next is unsupervised learning. Okay. The third is going to be reinforcement learning. Okay. So what are these things? In ML, the first thing is supervised learning. Okay, so we are going to create an algorithm with which we're going to train the system with the labeled data. So here we're going to have labeled data. We're going to have labeled data. We're going to use the labeled data to do classification. Pretty simple classification. And then we will do clustering. Right, so we're going to have labeled data. What is labeled data? We know what the data is. We have category under which we apply the data. That is going to be a supervised learning. But when it comes to unsupervised learning, it means we have no labeled data. We have data, but the data is not having or not having under any particular category. So we do not have any labeled data. Okay, so what is it going to do? It is going to find the pattern itself. So it will find a pattern itself. So we are not going to teach the pattern to the algo, but then the algorithm is going to find the pattern by all by itself. Okay, we are not going to tell the algorithm what is the pattern. The pattern is going to be found out by the algorithm by itself. That is unsupervised learning. But at the end of it again, we're going to do clustering. But then, when we talk about reinforcement learning, it's just the algo takes its own pub for optimizing. So we're not going to do anything here. The algorithm is going to take its own path for optimizing the results. So we majorly classify machine learning into these three things. Supervised learning, unsupervised learning, and then reinforcement learning. So we, we, we know how to and where to implement each one of this. If we have data and the data is classified, and we, we can teach the algorithm a pattern. We are going to teach the algorithm a pattern. So we are going to supervise the algorithm's pattern. So we call that a supervised learning. If we do not have labeled data, we want the algorithm to find a pattern of its own. Then we call that an unsupervised learning. Neither the pattern nor nothing, but then we want to enhance performance, then we want the algorithm to take its own path for optimizing stuff, then we call that as reinforcement learning. Majorly, we use these three things under ML. You would have heard this word ML, and maybe you heard all these three terms. What is the supervised learning? What is unsupervised learning? And then what is reinforcement learning?
Okay, the next term you might be very frequently um, hearing when you were, whenever you were saying you um, are into ML is that you would be hearing a term ML, but then again, you would be also hearing a term Here. Have you heard of it? deep learning? So what is deep learning? Deep learning, is it actually ML versus DL? Is DL a separate one? No. DL, deep learning is a part or a specialization of ML. So what is in deep learning? In deep learning, it deep learning purely relies upon um, A, N, N. which is artificial neural network. So what is this artificial neural network? It's just inspired from human brains. I hope you would have heard stories about how human brains uh, is emitting electromagnetic waves which could be amplified and be used. But then what is this uh, artificial neural network? Artificial neural network is again inspired by human brains, but it works in a way that it mimics uh, the way the human brain works. It connects multiple artificial networks in multi-layer fashion, just like how the brain stores the data. It isn't clear exactly how our brain stores our data, but then we have arrived in a pattern in which the brain stores our data, right? It may be layered. The information you are searching may not be on the top of your mind. Sometimes you feel this, you know it, but then suddenly it does not strike your mind. After some time, it tops up, it comes to the top. The same way artificial neural network has been designed, images, of data are captured and they are kept in multiple layers. The more the number of images, the deeper the network goes. The deeper the network goes, that's why it's called the DL, deep learning, all right? The deeper the network goes, okay? So more deeper the network goes, more learned your algorithm is. Does it make sense? So data is captured as images. The images are maintained in layers. These layers go very deep. So once this learning goes deeper and deeper, the algorithm is stronger and the pattern is more reliable. All right. So that is about the DL. A and N. Uh, again, connects again as I said, connects multiple multiple artificial networks um, in multiple layers. That is how it works. These are the major terms that you might come across whenever you hear the word AI or ML. Again, we never connected ML with AI. AI. Uh, one good example would be an uh, robot which could answer the questions. So, how does the robot know? what answer to give for what question it is pre-programmed you we have made the chip to learn if you hear these words these are the words that you has to give back in return that is how it works how does the sensor work you teach it this is the level this close you go to an in, uh, object then you go back if you are this close to an object you can still proceed the human brain does it manually, right? So let's say you were uh, having a rear parking sensor. You take the car in reverse. You hear the beep sound. Your mind is tuned. After a few times, your mind is tuned. Saying, if you if the if the um, if the beep sound is more frequent, then we have to hit the brake. If the beep sound is far away, less frequent then we can still go back a little. Human brain is trained like that. We're going to train the algorithm to understand that the object is in far, object is near. 
we can train the uh, algorithm so that it will implement that to work. Example, and vacuum cleaning machine automated. You go to office, you switch on your vacuum cleaner from your office, which cleans your house. How does it know where to stop? It can go under your bed, under your sofa, but not hit the wall. How does it know? You train it. We train it before. We say these are the hindrance. Once we give the path, it remembers the path. And every day it follows the same path. Yeah. How do we work with ML? So first, ML requires a great deal of understanding the domain data. Without understanding the data, none of these are possible. Either AI or ML, nothing is possible. And understanding data is basics of statistics. So how many of you from statistics? Okay, so when I say data, so what is data? How does data help or how, how is data collected? Uh, they have a fancy term for this data uh, that we leave back. Do you know what it is? It's called the data exhaust. We, we keep exhausting the data. Uh, so much of data uh, for example if i pick up myself okay what is the kind of data i leave behind now i am connected to the browser the kind of sites i visit every day is being recorded or is being monitored so google will know what kind of preference i have on my everyday routine to view the sites okay one simple example so we leave behind data so much of data apart from that what else do you know believe it or not i have account in a bank the bank just prompts me saying you will need to deposit so much of money in your account because so much of expense is coming up how did it know because i have set a pattern i've left a data exhaust i've exhaust i've i've left back data every month or month on month i make the same kind of expenses in the same period of the month. So it understands that this month, this much expense is going to come up, but my account is short of so much of money. So it's saying, please bring up so much of income so that you can meet your expenses. Trust me, you did it. Okay, that is again with the data exhaust that I've left behind. Okay, let's start some statistics now. 2005, you know how much data we, are, we had at that time? In the year 2005, we left 130 zekabyte, okay, exabyte, however you want to call this as. Um, so what is this calculation? How much of data is this? One character, one character is one byte, right? Eight bits. Let's imagine one word is one KB. So thousand KB, thousand byte is one KB. You know what? I'm just giving approximate. Okay. Um, if I go like this, so you already know the math. Um, thousand KB is one MB. If I keep going like this, I would end up in one GB. Um, one GB is equal to one human brain's data. Example, I'm telling you. If I keep it like that, or if you want to convert it to another way, I'm just doing a rough calculation. But one TB, one TB, I could collect the whole life As in video, HD video. If I collect the whole life as a video approximately, I could collect as one TB. So 1000 TB is one Zeta.
and thousand zeta is one exabyte. Thousand zeta is one exabyte. So you can imagine the volume of one thirty exabytes. That is way back in two thousand and five. I don't know, maybe in 2020, it is close to some um, 40 to 50,000. So in 2020, it's 40 to 50,000 exabytes. Because we leave back so much of data every single day. Every single day we exhaust so much of data. How does it how does it maintain it? So all data are not categorizable. All data do not fa fall under a pattern. So how does it capture it? If it is able to capture and categorize it, it will put it into supervised learning. If it is not able to find a category, then it will try to go into unsupervised learning. After it does these two, then it will go for reinforcement learning. Now, maybe the way you grow, it can use DL. How you are able to understand uh, the child growth. So it could be a DL, a different layered learning of how exactly the pattern changes with every stage in a human growth. Just an example of where you will use or ML and DL are being used in your real life in every day. That is the online editor. Uh, the good thing about this online editor is you could add a file. You could add a file here. That is the good thing. But then if you do not want to use this particular online editor, if Google is fine for you, you could use Google Collab. Just go to Google Collab. You don't have to share anything at all. It will help you to write code upload the files and work with it. But you will have to be signed in for you to comfortably work with it. You can see that you can just add code, you can execute it at every single point. This is my drive and it is pretty clean. You can see I have a folder. I need to sign in before I uh, can upload the files. Or if I just have to work with the code, I could just work with the code right here. There's no problem. So I can have a text area. I'm just going to say learning Python. I'm going to have a code area so I can have a text area. I can have a code area. For example, a simple Python code. I'm just going to use print. Print is the output statement in Python. There's no semicolon. There's no terminator here. You could execute the code simply by hitting the cell. You should be signed in to execute the code. Well, I'm going to sign in. So can you. So, as I told you, this is Google Collab. You can use Google Collab. Um, you can sign into Google or you could use a Python online editor. If you have downloaded Spider, you can work with Spider. I will show you the first working in all the three. I repeat, I will show you the first working in all the three. After that, you can choose your comfortable working by yourself. All right. So first, let's start with the online editor. This is again, I've shared the link in the chat. 
the online editor, you could just say hello world. So how do you execute it? You just run it from here. You can see the output down below. I hope it's visible. Print is the output statement in Python. It's a function. So first let's learn basics of Python. All right. Okay, now I'm going to add a coding section under that. So this is to add the code. This is to add the text. If you're working in Google Colab, now this is going to be the code. I'm going to say print, open parenthesis. If it's a string constant, then it should be in single quotes. If you could deep dive in Python, Python uses three type of uh, uh, quotations. You know, I'm going to get into all that. Hello world, we never break the tradition. Always the first code has to be hello world. So how do you execute it? You just hit it to execute it. Python, will, I mean, uh, Google will execute this one for you. It's a Python file already. It will just give you the result down below. You can see it prints hello world for us. Print is the output statement. Now, if you are working with Spider, if you open Spider, it would open the untitled Python file for you. Choose a location for you to save the file. I've just put the required files in here, so I'm just going to save it here. We'll call this file one or one dot. Why is in Python file? Save. You can see the extension is py, indicating that it's a Python file. These are comments. So let's just get rid of all this. Again, we're going to go for the basics. Print. Hello world. How do you execute it? First, you go ahead and save after you keyed in. Then you hit the execute. The shortcut is F5. You could choose what you want to do. So here is hello world again. The choice is yours. If you choose to work along, you could either use the online editor. You can use Google Collab. Or if you have already downloaded and installed Spider, you could use Spider. Or if you know first line of code, we could do in Python. If you want to create a variable, if you want to do basic math, you could work very easily in Python. Uh, let's do a simple example. I'm going to say num1 is equal to 10. Num2 is equal to 20. I will say sum is equal to num1 plus num2. Just an example. Then we will print sum. Now note, I have not used the single quotes because I'm going to print a variable. Let's save, let's execute. You can see the output right here. Just to simplify things, I'm gonna copy and work in all the three environments so that you can understand better. I don't have to repeat the code, but I just have to execute here. You can see the output here too. So is Google Collab. And you can execute it. It's pretty much same wherever you want to work. You want to work in the online editor, you want to work in Google Collab, or you want to work in Spider. All the three, you'll be very comfortable working in. So did you try the basic code? Can I move on? All right. So let's next do um, another code, but then uh, first we will add array, or we will just call it collection. Why collection is important? Collection is important because data is never going to be single. Am I right? Data is always going to be in collection for us. 
because we're not going to give one data. We're going to have a collection of data. How does it work that way? So let's call scores. That's in plural. That's a variable name to which I'm going to assign value. So let's say 120, comma, 210, 180, comma, 300, comma, 150. So let's say these are scores. Let's print it. We know how to print now. So print scores. Let's execute it. You can see it prints the score. Let's do a little bit modification. Google Lab is very, very intelligent. You can see that it has prompted the method which we might be using. It's called sort. You can see very simply, it's not sorted because we sort it after we print it. Let's print again. Look at that. The data is sorted. So likewise, you can key it in anywhere you want. You can either key it in your code. You can key it in spider. You can key it in wherever you want. Are we good enough? Did we try it? Basic collections. If you want me to stop or pause, please let me know. I am not going to get into the conditional statements. No, nothing. We just have the basics where we know how to declare a variable, how the collection looks here. Do we have a way of storing data other than this? And how to write a comment? How will we write a comment in Python? Let's say I don't want to print this code here. I want to comment it. What is the comment? Comment is some line which is available in code but it does not get executed. So how do you write a comment in Python? You just use the hash, it gets commented. Now let's execute it. You will see that only the sorted score is printed. If you are working in Spider, if you want to comment a line of code, If you want to uh, if you want to comment this line of code you can use the shortcut control and one the number one together it's a toggle key so you could use it to comment and uncomment you want to comment you could use the same you want to uncomment you can use the same that's the benefit of using an editor by the way You can see it here, comment or uncomment. It's control plus one. Are we good till here? All right, now we know we're going to do a basic working. What we're going to do is we're going to implement a few steps of how we're going to work with ML.
let's write the steps we're going to go step by step very very slow we're going to import the libraries Okay, then you're going to import the data set. We'll check if the data is missing. Okay, then we are going to do some encoding. where we would be saying that we would be encoding independent variable. Then we would be encoding, if required, the dependent variable. And finally, we will split the data. Require, we might be looking at the feature scale. These are the preparatory steps that we might implement in every single algorithm that we use in ML. So we're going to understand these steps first. And after we understand these steps, we would jump into the statistics a bit and then we will do our first prediction. That is going to be our aim. We're going to understand these steps, how we can implement them in Python. And then we would be go jumping into the statistics. Then we will understand why we require statistics. Then we will jump into the first prediction. And then we will complicate and again we will do one more prediction that's going to be our aim for the day so we'll import the libraries that are required what are the importing the libraries that are required so again i would be doing it in all the three the first example alone after that i would be working with a spider or anyone that is comfortable you can choose your way to work around all right so first let's pick up importing the library how would you import an library? Let's get rid of these code. How would you import an library? And why is it required? So let's say you want to read a file. You want to read a file. How will you read a file in Python? How will you read a file in Python? You might be first wanting to put the file here and then you might want to read the file, okay? You might want, if this is uploading a file, so let me upload the file. I just have the basic file that I've shared with you people. That's called the data. I'm going to open the file. This is the data.csv. That is the file. I can upload it like this. So let's delete and do it one more time. If you're using the online editor, you choose to upload the file. The data.csv, please go to the location where you have data.csv. You could just upload the file. The file is available for me right here. All right, I'm just going back to main.py. Okay, I can read the file. How do I read my file here? First step. So let's do the import. And thus, it's an inbuilt library in Python. We could have any um, shortcut or this is just a reference for that. We could use any one that we require. Okay. We could use any one that we require. Okay. It could be anything. A, B, C, X, Y, Z. Anything is fine. So Pandas is an inbuilt library that is available in Python. How do you import the library? That is how you import the library. Why do we require this library? This library contains those methods 
that might be helpful for us to import the file. Okay, just the basics. We're not going to get into the details of how we are going to import the file and what all is available in Pandas within. We're just understanding the basics here. So Pandas is a library that allows us to import the file in Python. So how do we import the file using Pandas? So let's read the file. We will call this dataset. It's an apt word to take the data. So I'm going to use the reference name that we created here, pd dot. The method is read underscore csv, which is the type of the file. So I have to give the name of the file. If you see, it's data dot csv. That's how I read it. Now let's print it. Hence, date set. Pretty much simple what I have done here. So let's run it. It has to read the file and it has to print it. Look at that. It's as simple as that. It has read the file for us and it has printed it. It has automatically created the column index and then it has taken the data and it has read the file. So this is my file. You can see it here. And this is how it is read in the file. Basics. Let's try the same in Google Lab. Porting libraries. I add a code. It's going to paste the code, but it's going to give me an error now. It's saying the file is not found. It's not able to find data.csv, obvious. I did not add the file. So how do you add the file? You go to the files. It has some sample data for us. This is not what we want. We need to upload the file to this session. So data is going to be the file. Okay, so I have the data. If you want, you could just copy the path and just Paste the path here. That's going to be the path where the file is. Now let's execute. There you go. So it is read the file from the content. So how do you do that? pd.readcsv. And then you go to the files. You upload the file. That's the file you can see here. And then how did we upload it? We just copied the path from here. And then I use the path to paste it here, and then we used it. That's way number two. Way number three, if you are working in Spider, so you save the file in the location where the uh, CSV file is, or in other words, you put your data in the same working place. You put your data in the same working place. So I'm going to read the data.csv. All right, so how do I do it? Just copy the code. I don't have to write the code again. I'm just going to copy this code nicely from here and just paste it over here. Save it and execute it. There you go. You can see the output in the console. It has read the file. It has read the files. Do you have any questions for me? Okay, so we have read the form. Basics, so the first step is reading the file. We have read the file, all right? Now, since it is done, the next step is importing the data set. That also is done because we have imported the data. We have imported the data, but the data is not properly imported because um, we require this to be converted to and collection using um, Python. So how do we do that? Now I don't need this line. So I'm just going to comment this line. Since I've read the data, I'm just going to use another import statement here. Import 
numpy as empty. So now we are going to have a variable x. Okay. Now why x and y? Because the first example we are going to see is in regression. What is a regression? Regression usually um, relates or goes to um, repetition. So why regression? Why regression? We are going to use an variable x which determines y. Which is a y. depends on x okay y depends on x i could give you one one lot law one million example of this x and y salary is dependent on experience price is dependent on quality time is dependent on work done or work done is dependent on time score is dependent on effort Knowledge is dependent on learning. Correct? So we have an X, we have a Y. Where X is independent and Y is dependent on X. Let me repeat. X is independent and then Y is dependent on X. Now, if you look at my data over here. My file is here. This is the data that we opened. Let's open the data. It's just a basic Excel CSV file. I have the country name. I have the age of people. I have their salary. And then I have a choice whether they have purchased my product or not. So I have these three data about my customers. And this is whether they made a purchase or not. I'm trying to make a pattern out of it. If they are from India, if they're from age 44, if their salary is so much, they've not purchased. But they're from US, they're 27, 48, but they've purchased. So you can see India, but then at 35, they made a purchase. At 44, they didn't make a purchase. Does it make sense? Does it have some correlation? We're going to check that. So these three are independent variable. Country is an independent variable on its own. Age is an independent variable on its own. Salary is an independent variable of its own. But then purchased, whether they purchase the product or not, is dependent on the salary, age, and the country they're coming from. So these contributing factors might make an impact of whether the sale would happen or not. Does that make sense? Okay. So now, um, since we have uploaded the data, now we have to divide it into X and Y. So as I told you in the, uh, in, in the example, X is independent and Y is dependent. If you look at our case, then this is the dependent. These three are independent. These three are independent. So we have independent variables. We have dependent variable. We need to split it now. We have to remove the independent and the dependent as separate references. How do we make it? So we're just learning Python that are essential for our data science, nothing else. So how do we achieve it? You can keep this as a template even when you are working at a later point of time. So I'm going to start with this. So x is equal to, I have my data in the data set. So data set dot ILOC will help you to give the location from where you require the data. It takes two parameters, the number of rows, the number of columns. Do we require to specify which row we require? We require all the rows as of now. So I'm going to say a colon, which means everything. Okay. But when it comes to number of columns, I'm just going to say colon minus one, which indicates 
that it's going to be all the columns except the last column. So let's have a look here. I have country, age, and salary, but I don't need the purchased because X is the independent categories. So I don't need the purchase. So I'm leaving out the minus one starting from the right. In Python, the index starts from zero. So this is going to be zero, one, two. You could say like that too. Now let's print text to understand whether it's properly done. Save and then execute. You can see here that it is imported the data where you can see it is left out the purchased column. I hope it's visible to you. It is left out the purchased column. All right, that's how I pick up X. If you do not want to write like this, you could still be saying zero colon two. So zero, one, two. It will make the same effect. Sorry, three. Till three, correct? So zero up to three. You can see still it will make the same effect. Zero, one, two, up to three. Or then why am I going for minus one? So this is a generalized way. You could always, usually, the predicted column, the prediction column will be on the rightmost corner. And we might predict only one value. So it would be in the rightmost corner. So this would generalize the way the code works. So that is why it's in the rightmost, all right? So that's my X, which is the independent categories. Now let's go for the Y, which is going to be the dependent. Y is equal to, again, from the same data set, dot I location. Again, I require all the rows, but what is the column that I require? I just require the fourth, third column. I could say three, and then let's print Y. Let's see what happens. Good enough, good enough. I could just say three. But then again, if you want to generalize, as I said, since it can also count from the right, you could just say minus one because usually the predicted column will be the rightmost column. So let's save, let's execute. You can see that the predicted column will be the rightmost column in this fetch though. All the rows from that particular column. So we have the dependent and the independent ready for our usage. Any questions, people? All right then, so the next step, what is the third step? So as you know, we could be doing the same thing in any of the editor. If you are using Google Collab. Remember, if you are using them in one particular code unit, it's fine. If you are using them in different code unit, then you might have to uh, execute every single code unit. All right. So for example, if you want to use importing the library as a separate code unit, then you just execute it. So that's importing the library. Let's add a text. We will have it as importing the data set. Now, if I add a line of code here, ensure you execute it. And then execute this one. Okay, now let's try. 
Then try. Tanong, nampay. My bad, my bad. The parenthesis. There you go. So here also it works the same way. Here also it works the same way. All right. You could work with any particular uh, editor that you require. As I told you, it's your choice. So you could simply choose the editor that you require. I would be continuing in uh, Google Collab uh, if you are OK. So we just work with Google Collab. We have done the importing the data set. Now the next step would be encoding. Or first, the missing value. Why the missing value is very important. You can see that I have a missing value in the age. I have a missing value in the salary. So why and why we, we require to uh, bother about the missing values? Missing values will affect your output in the prediction. We need to understand the importance of every single row. Uh, if you do not have a value, then how can you fill it? Is there any way? One way is you could go ahead and get the real data. You could make some calls and you can find out the real data and then work with the real data. If that is not comfortable or it's not a viable solution, then how do you work with it? What could we do about it? What could we do about it? There are three different ways. First way, you could fill it up with the mean. Mean is the average. So we could always fill it up with the mean. If you fill it up with the mean, it's pretty simple. You will have to find out the average and you can fill up the data. Either you could do it manually or you could use something that's already existing in Python for us to work on. So we are going to use something that's already existing in Python to work on. OK, but what are the other ways you could use the median? I hope you know what mean median and mode are. Am I right? Mean is the average. Median is sorting the data in the sanding order and finding out the middle value. And mode is the most frequently repeating values. All right. So you could be using any one of these three techniques. Now I'm going to use mean. How do I use it? So let's add a text area where we're going to say missing data, handling missing data. Add a code. Now, since we have already executed the above one, we could go with the rest of the code. So I'm going to say, first, I need to import a functionality that is required for us to handle the missing data. SK learn. SK learn. We call this Skylearn. Skykithlearn. Um, this is a prominent place where we uh, rely upon for most of our data science working with ML. It provides you a great deal of classes and methods that we could be using when we are working with data. Now we are going to particularly use a simple imputer class for us to deal with the missing data that is available in impute. Okay, from here I'm going to import simple imputer. I'm going to import the simple imputer. You might find some difference. Earlier when I did an import, I just did import fantasies PD, import numpires and P. But then here I'm saying from VAT to import because these are provided by Python itself. These are third party. So you say from where you're going to make an import. All right. That is the difference. Now, after that, I'm just going to create a reference for this. Imputer, 
simple imputer is a class. Simple imputer is a class. Uh, I hope you all know what class is. A class is a collection of member variables and methods. A class is a data type of its own. So this is the constructor for the class I'm calling. I'm going to provide it certain uh, parameters for me to do the working. What are those? I'm going to say What are the missing values? Missing values already we have imported the NumPy. You can see on the top, it's the reference is NP. So I'm going to call NP dot. I need the NAN, not a number. You can see when it imports, you can see that it would be not a number. Let's edit this. You can see these values are not a number. So I'm going to concentrate on those values. I'm going to replace them. With the mean. So you can choose what you want right here. Whether you want the mean, you want the median, you want the mode. You can choose what is the strategy that you're going to use to fill in the numbers. Now that we have set the imputer, imputer will help you to fill the missing values. We have said that, okay, in my data set, find the not, not NANs, that is not a numbers, and then replace them with the mean of the data of that particular category. Since there are no empties in the country, I don't bother about it. I'm only working on the age and salary here. Now we have done it. Now, after you do that, we are still not related it with our data. How do you relate it with your data? Now my data, I'm going to say imputer dot fit in X, all the rows not all the columns right so i'm going to ignore the zeroth column one to column up to three so up to one to column three i'm going to do the fitting fit is a method which will help you to implement the strategy we would be working with these methods again and again you would become really really comfortable with these methods trust me um, fit is a method which will which will implement the strategy now, but it will not do the working. So how do you make it work? To make it work, call this here. We would not call the fit, but then we are going to call the transform. Now we have learned a lot of new things here. Let's repeat what we did just to understand. This is just a pretty much a simple import statement. I'm importing a class called simple imputer. The simple imputer to the simple imputer, I'm setting certain things. This is configuring the imputer. I'm configuring the imputer. I'm telling the imputer, hey, imputer, go and look for um the not a number those are going to be the missing values because if i look the data like this the no missing values as such because it's replaced by nan so i'm saying the missing values are those values which which has said not a number and what are you going to replace it with please replace it with the mean of that particular column and then i'm saying imputer you please apply the strategy ready to apply the strategy on my x x okay so um since we have um we have the uh, fit 
we preparing it to uh, implement it in those particular columns which we require we are ignoring the zeroth column because it has um, all the uh, countries which is not having any missing values and it is not numeric and then we are calling the transform method which will do the working and return back the change to data which we are applying in our x so now if we print x again we would find the difference so let's try did i make a mistake mean and a n everything looks fine Okay. Still no. Did I make a mistake in the fit? Missing underscore values is equal to NP dot NAN. have to provide why My split is right.
slice of none comma none comma of none comma slice of one comma three all the rows and one comma three Oh, did I do that? The same values, simple computer of missing underscore values equal to np dot nam. Strategy is equal to mean imputer dot fit. X of Simple computer. I go wrong by any way. I know why. I know why. My bad, my bad, my bad. Oh. Okay, my bad. So uh, guys, just a version change in Python. So I just have to use the dot values so that it picks up the data in the proper data type. That's why we always have to go through the data type. Okay, if you do not use dot values, what would happen is it would, you now you can look it's in the array. When I use no dot values, let's try that again. Look, my data is the raw data. I forgot to add the dot values here. So that was a mistake. So you can see that now it's proper data and the imputer has done its job. Okay, imputer has done its job. But then now, as I said again, we have to transform the value. So how are we going to do that again? So we're going to pick up this data and say it's going to be imputer dot transform now we are going to transform the values the same values and then store it here we're going to print x after it is transformed let's have a look you can see the missing values are replaced by mean let's open it in excel you can find 6377 is the mean. 6377 is being replaced. Again, in the age, 38.77. So you can see that it has replaced the missing values with the mean of the data. It has replaced the missing values with the mean of the data. See, again here, you can round it off. I'm not getting into the smooth working. I'm not getting into the details of Python. So I'm just going to ignore it. Like, let's leave it like this. I'm just touching the very basics of Python, what it is required. Now we have to go for the next step. Um, what is the next step and why do we require it? See, um, we have to take the data from this column that is specially the column which has text. See, if it is a text, my prediction may not be proper. If it is text, my prediction may not be proper. So I need a proper way to make my prediction. I need a proper way to make my prediction. How do I ensure that I convert this data to a numeric data? How do I ensure I convert this data to a numeric data? For example, I could keep, there are three values here, India, UK, and US. I'm just, 
alphabetically arranging the 0, 1, and 2. So I could just encode them like this. I could replace it here, option number 1. Even if I do it manually, now I have some 10 records, so I can choose to do it manually. But then in real time, you might be having lakhs and lakhs of records, which you cannot replace it like this, finding out every single category. Then what would be your option? These are called pre-processing steps. If you do not pre-process your data, prediction is not possible. So what we are learning here, we are learning pre-processing the data. What all we did? First, we imported the data. Then we uh, found out the missing values and we replaced them with the average. So we also saw how we could work with the rest. But then now we are going to use uh, Python's inbuilt libraries to work with the data, which is text or category data. How do we change it? So if you want to do it like this, well, it's very much possible. Again, we have pre-processing libraries which are available in SkyKit Learn. We could use the label encoder to achieve the result. How do we do it? We will go to the Google Collab. We will add a text, not here, after this, we will add a text here, this is for encoding, okay. we will add a code here. As I said, we are going to go to sklearn dot pre-processing i'm going to import a class called label encoder it's an inbuilt class so i'm going to use that i'm going to use a reference called le for label encoder since it's a class i use the parenthesis i'm not configuring the class here I created the class. I set some configuration using the constructor. But here I'm not passing any data. It's just going to be the label encoder. Just like that as it is. Now the next step what I'm going to do is I'm going to just try out whether it's working properly or not. Okay. So we would pick up the zeroth column. That's what we require. So we will just name it Z. Already we have, we have X and Y. So I'm just going to have Z data set dot. Again, I'm using I location, all the rows, but the zeroth column. I'm going to pick up the zeroth column. Le dot. Again, we're going to call the method fit. We're going to call the fit method, and we're going to pass the Z which we have just now created. We're going to pass this and then we're going to call the transform. You might be wondering, Gayatri, last time it made sense at least a little bit, but people were very new. You said, find the missing values, use the NAN to find the missing values, use the strategies in mean to replace this missing values. And then you said fit and then you set the transform. So it would prepare the data and then transform the data and give back. But in here, you were not even saying anything. So what is that to fit? The label encoder automatically does this for you. Let's have a look. Okay, the label encoder is so powerful. It automatically does this work for you. So I'm going to say, um, well, we will try it out. So Z is equal to le dot transform okay, so first we set the fit then we set the transform let's say print okay Let's try it. 
So again, first we will print Z here. Print Z. So initially you can see that it is India, US, but then later on you can see that it is converted it to 0, 2, and 1. So what did we have the encoding as? 0 is India, 2 is US, and then 1 is UK. I did not say anything. I, you can just remove it from here, it does not matter. But then you can see or alphabetically it will arrange your data into categories and then it will encode them. It's not a good practice. Let's see first how it has done it. So you can see one is India, so it's zero. It's US, so it's two. UK is one. Again, two, one, zero, two, zero, one and zero that it is so that is how it does the conversion sure i will share it in the chat window for sure why not but then as i said this is not the proper way of doing the encoding why See, uh, if I am going to use these categories to do some calculations, um, it will consider these values and moreover, it might consider this as priorities. So zero is uh, least priority, two is high priority. It does not make sense, correct? So what I would prefer instead of this is create three different columns as in India, UK, and then US. Now, if it's India here, it's going to be one, zero, and zero. If it is US, it's going to be zero, zero, and one. If it's going to be UK, it's going to be zero, one, and zero. I hope it made sense to you. So if it's India, it has to give one here. If it is US, then it has to give one in here. If it is UK, it has to give one in here. That means it has to convert this one column into three different columns so that I can consider it for my working. Could I do something like that, which will help me to identify, even if I multiply this with this, it will not make any effect. Correct? It will not consider as a priority because if I'm going to encode it as 0 and 1 and 2, it might consider that as priority. I don't want it to happen that way. So is there some way I could do that? Yes. Well, we're going to do that now. So we're now going to use this. We're going to say... Um, From pre-processing, we are going to import one hot encoder. This class is a pre-built class, which will help us to do the encoding, but we require one more. So from sklearn, trust me, it's a Bible for data science, sklearn, compose, we're going to import column transformer that's why i love google collab it just knows what i need so first we will work with the column transformer is equal to column transformer to the parameters i'm going to give transformers equal to it's an array it's an array i hope i will not make any mistakes in the brackets it's an array so the first parameter is i'm going to say it's an encoder it has to do the encoding so i'm going to say it's encoder okay the second parameter is i have to give the encoder type so what is the encoder type? I have already given the one hot encoder. So I'm going to use it. 
I'm going to use the one hot encoder, which I have used. How do I do that? I'm going to say one hot encoder. It's in class. So the parenthesis. Again, what column it has to encode? It has to encode the zeroth column. It has to encode the zeroth column. Okay, it has to encode the zeroth column. Now, are we done? No, because we need to also say, leave the rest of the columns. So how do you say that? After this parenthesis, you say, reminders. Reminder is equal to pass through. So please pass through the rest of the columns. Just ensure that you use the zeroth column. You use one hot encoder as the encoding technique and do the transformation. That's what I have said. Now I'm going to call an EC method here. So go all the way till the end. And then I'm going to call x is equal to numpy.array. Conversion is very important because the fit transform will give you data as in raw. So I need to convert it. So CT is my column transformers reference. I call the fit transform. of x let me explain a little bit but let's first see that in action so that's the output now if i explain it will make more sense now you can see that um i have my first i'm Im importing the one hot encoder then i i am going to say i want the column transformer i'm using the class to pass uh, the configuration the reminder is i'm just choosing one column for transformation what should i do with the remaining column just pass through them and what is the encoding type one hot encoder which column has to be encoded the zeroth column so that's why i do not choose the column here Unlike the last time, I do not choose the column here. Now I'm saying X is in whole. I'm converting it to an array. And I'm saying the fit transform. It will fit and also do the transform and give back the results. So I'm passing X. So it will pick up the zeroth column. It will use one hot encoder, which will convert it like this. You can have a look. It will convert it like this and then it will pass through the rest of the columns and it will convert it to an array and give you back the array. All right. Now my data is almost ready. Now I just need to split it for my working. We will talk about why we need to split it. But I said it's almost ready. That means uh, there is a teeny bit <coughs> which I could improve. So what is the improvement that I could do? Look at my Y, that's my prediction, right? That's going to be my dependent variable. Again, it's a text. So you know we cannot work with text. We will have to work with um, numeric value. But then here, I could go with S and no. That is 1 and 0. It's like a switch. So 0 is no and um, S is 1. I could go with the switch. So for that, you remember we use the label encoder. We would use that. So I'm going to add that. So this is going to be encoding the dependent variable. Now let's add the code here. 
I hope you remember the code. We could go real, real quick for that. So from, I think I pasted it in the chat. I pick that up and make modifications. That would reduce the time. Okay. But then uh, this part is the same. Pre-processing, import label encoder. Label encoder. But then um, I don't need this part because I'm going to use Y. I already have it ready. And then again, I'm going to say Y is equal to. I don't need the fit and the transform separately. Again, here also I have fit transform. Let's check this out. You can see no is zero and S is one. So we have encoded the independent and the dependent variables. So all these are steps for pre-processing of a data. What is pre-processing? You have your data. You cannot directly do some predictions with your data. You might have missing values. You might have categorical data. You might want to prepare this data. And after you prepare this data, you will have to split it. Why split though? Why do we have to split the data? Is it required to split the data? Uh, let's say you have 1,000 records. You can split the data as an 800 and 200. Why? With this 800 records, you will make the algorithm learn the pattern. And you check it with the rest of the 200 records. So that when you have the 1,001 record, you will know whether it is working all right or not. I hope I made my point clear. If you have a whole set of data, you split the data like 75, 25 or 80, 20 percent. I'm talking about the percentage. You split the data. So why do you split the data? You split the data so that you make it understand the pattern with one major chunk of data. After you made the algorithm understand the pattern, you test it on the remaining data that you already have. So if you test it, you will know whether the pattern that you have made the algorithm learn is good enough or not. So once you test it, then you are ready for implementing the data on newer records. That is the point. So how do you split the record? Splitting is very simple step again. So let's add the, oh no. Let's add the text. Call the strain and test. We're going to split the data for training and testing. Training is what we train the algorithm to understand the pattern. Testing is what with which we're going to test the data. So how do you do that? Again, from sklearn. So you cannot live without it. But model selection, you want to import a method this time, train test split. That is the method we are going to import. So we're going to create four different uh, variables. This is again Python speciality. You don't have to use them independently like other languages. You can just use them like that. So I'm going to call this X train. Always the order has to be like this. This is how it will split the data. So X test, comma, Y train, and then Y test. Why we have to split it into four parts? 
again why we have to split it into four parts because again you will have to understand that for the testing i require x and y for the training also i require x and y because only if i have the y the dependent on my training my algorithm can be made to understand the pattern of why it has to be like that i hope i made sense so i have my x and y which i already have made it ready so i'm going to pass this data to this method so that it's going to split it it's going to split x into two parts for training and testing y into two parts for training and testing so how does it do it train test split is the method it's going to take x comma y it is going to be split but then we're going to provide more to it so we're going to say test size so what is going to be the size which you're going to give for the test see this is maximum is one so you give 0.2 which means 80 percent for training 20 percent for testing you could change it 0.25 your choice your choice completely your choice but an industry goes with 80 20. you could make your own choice and also it could be random you don't want it to be a perfect split from top to bottom it is wrong approach so you will say random state is equal to one which indicates that it's true so random state is equal to one we are done so just example print x underscore train paste it y train x test y test so these are the variables that we require let's execute them so you can see that it is x train y train x test y test in our case it is so visible because we have 10 records so you can see eight records eight records two records two records so the split is done our data is pre-processed and ready for machine learning so we have learned the steps for pre-processing our data let's quickly revise what we have been doing so this is basics of python i'm not going to reiterate that this is importing the packages simple syntax so import pandas we have created a reference import numpy we have created reference pandas we have used for reading the csv file numpy we have used for iloc and also down below okay for array and other purposes so then what did we do we have imported the data set we have read the values into x and y where x is independent variables and y is the dependent value now we are split it and then we are going to work with the data we have used simple imputer to fill the missing values we said the missing values is not a number we have substituted it with the mean there you go the results and after that we have done some encoding why we have categorical data which we have done with some encoding so we've said uh, these are since these are categorical data we have split them into three different columns and we have given the data right there so we also saw how we are doing it in our code right here okay let me clear everything so that you do not have any issues okay after that the dependent variable we have categorized it as switch zero and one using label encoder 
um, so that it switch flips between zero and one, whether it is true or false, whether they've made the purchase or not. After that, we have split the data for our working. I hope uh, till here everybody is clear. Is there any any questions that you have for me? Okay, I just have one final step in case uh, this is the optional step. You might go for this only when you have um, to edit a great deal of data, which are in various ranges. Um, why though? Let's have a look on our data. If you look at our data right now, one particular value is in thousand, 72,000, 48,000. Another value is like 44, 27. And another is zero and one. They're not in the common range. Sometimes you might want to edit them in common range. So how do you do something like that? It is called a feature scaling. It's called feature scaling. Okay. So now I'm going to add a coding below it to do the feature scaling. After we do feature scaling, these are pre-processing steps. We would go for break and then come back for simple regression, learning regression and implementing it as an ML. Okay, right. So there are two ways. One is standardization. Um, another one is normalization. Guys, for data science, you need to understand statistics. Um, it is very important that you understand statistics. Without that, it's very difficult. Okay, so... Um, Feature scaling first is standardization. Standardization is, um, let's say it is X standardization is equal to X minus mean of X divided by So it will automatically calculate the standard deviation of x and then it will implement it for every single value that is standardization feature standardization uh, feature scaling using um, standardization if you want to use normalization we will call this x normalization x norm is equal to x minus minimum of x when i use the capital it is the all the value the minimum value in everything it's an aggregation function divided by maximum that's available in the x minus minimum that's available in the x so this is normalization um you could be using um either standardization or normalization Usually, uh, the maximum used is standardization. So we could be using standardization even in, in our data. So how do we implement standardization in our data? Good news is that we don't have to write all these formulas by ourselves. We could just use um, the inbuilt methods and classes. So we're going to use a class called standard scalar, which is, of course, available in a scalar. So from sk learn dot preprocessing import standard scalar again we create an reference for it ss equal to 
standard scalar. <laughs> it's a class. Then I'm going to say x underscore train is equal x, x underscore train of all the rows, comma, the third column. Till the end, you could say equal to standard scalar dot fit transform fit and then transform together again the same values x train of this i will have to repeat it with the test two because the third column is very weighted data right so for this x test. Similarly, x test. So then we will print x test. We'll print x train. Look at that. So it has standardized my data. You can have a look. It has standardized my data. Why from the third column? Because the first 0, 1, 2 columns are category column. I don't want them to be standardized. I don't want them to be touched. So I started from the third column. That is why I started from the third column. Now you can see the range of the data are very close. Um, guys, again, uh, one more thing is that um, you might be using standardization before uh, your split, but then I would suggest you use standardization after the split. It's a, uh, not only the good practice, but then uh, see the standardization of the data um, should be based on the data range. After you split, because it's a random split, the test and the train data will contain different ranges of data. That is the reason I ask you to do it after you split the data. If you do it before you split the data, still it might yield the same result, but not in all the cases. Here you can see it's pretty much, you can see the difference. There I have all the values as in decimal points. Here it is, my standardization is quite different. I hope you understood the difference. So if you do the standardization before the split, what would happen is it will use the whole range of data to do this feature scaling. But then for training the data, feature scaling is different. For testing the data's feature scaling is different because the range of data might be different because we're using random values. Did I make sense to all of you? We used all these steps to get our data ready. Now let's understand how we can work with our data. Um, first, we need to understand the pattern with which our data is there. Now, let me open another file for you simply. Since we have now learned pre processing, my file's name is salary data. It just has two columns it has years of experience, it has salary. So, there are 30 records. I have years of experience. I have salary, okay? You can understand that um, this data is a very simple data. There is only one X and this Y is dependent on this X. So it's called simple linear regression. It's simple because there's just one X and one Y. Okay, now if I plot all these in a chart, it might look like this. So let's draw an X and Y axis or triangle.
Okay, so I have the X and Y axis here. Now I could be plotting the marks anywhere in here. Let's say um, this is my salary level. Let's flip to the Excel sheet. So it starts somewhere from 39,000. So it should be somewhere here. Uh, if we if we split it into different ones, so we say this is ten thousand. Twenty thousand and so on. So thirty thousand should be somewhere here for one point one years experienced. Let's make this a star. Thirty thousand. And then you have 46 suddenly. So it goes up the next year. And then 37. So somewhere here. And so on. So it might be like this, like this, like this. It could go on and on like this. So what is simple linear regression? How do I make a common way to find out whether what the trend is? So I could just move the trend line like this to show that, you know, this is how it goes. My data is plotted on both the sides, though there is a gap. You cannot deny that there is a gap. There is a gap, but then, yes, the trend is somewhat like this. So if your data has just one and two, so here I go saying it's one year and then two year and then three year, so on and so forth. Now, the difference between one and two year. So this is the first year and the slope between the second year, the slope here. This is the one year slope. I call this as the slope, which is the B1. Okay, so how do I do an equation in statistics for this? I say y is equal to B0 plus B1 into x. So that is how. I will make the change. So I will say B0 into B1 plus X. Now, if you convert it into the type of data that we have, we, we have years of experience, we have salary. So we will say salary is equal to B0. What is B0? We will see what is B0 in a bit. B0 plus B1, which is the slope range, into X. Now, what is B0 here? The starting point. So if we say the first is 39,349, that's going to be your B0. So this point, let's mark this point. So this point is B0. And this will be B1. This would be B1. So this is linear, simple linear regression. Why is it simple? It is simple because there is one dependent variable, just one dependent variable. That's it. So based on that, we are arriving on the pattern. So it is simple linear regression, okay? It's simple linear regression, okay? So how do we make the change? So how do we make the change? Now we could be um, deriving on the value very simply. So let's say the beginning salary again is uh, 15,000. So the salary of any particular person would be 15,000 plus how much is the years of experience? Let's say the person is one year experienced. One into the gap. 
what is the slope let's say the slope is 10000 so i would say 10000 for every year so it is 10000 for every year okay so it should be actually the reverse 10000 into one year so if a person is one year experienced his salary would be typically 15000 which is the b0 if at all it is then it would be 10,000, which is a gap for every year. And then into number of years, that would be the salary that the person would be drawing. This is called simple linear regression. So can we predict our data with simple linear regression? Is that possible? That's what we're going to see now. Now my data is already available. I've shown you the data. So this is my data. I'm not going to write code again. I'm just going to use the code that is already there because we know how to do the pre-processing. So we're just going to use the code that is already there. Okay. <coughs> All right. So we are going to learn. We have no missing values, so we don't need this. The first two steps are pretty much the same, but then the file name is different. You can see my file name is salary data. So let's pick up this particular file name. Let's just check X and Y. Print X. Save and execute. All right. So it just shows the years of experience. I hope you it's visible to you. Let's print Y. Save and then execute. You can see that it just shows the salary. So we have X and Y that is ready. Now our next step. Okay. So uh, what is our next step? Our next step should be splitting the training and the testing data. Since we have nothing else to be processed here, we could simply split the train and test data. You can see that I do not have any categorical data. I have done this part importing the data set. I don't have any missing values. You can see my data is clean. I don't have any missing values. Well, then what is our next step? Then no encoding because I have no categorical data. Then what is our next step? Of course, splitting the training and the testing, right? So we would be splitting the training and the testing. So let's save it. Let's execute again. You can see that I have the X train, Y train, X test, and then Y test. So again, I've split it into 20% here. You can see that I've split it into 20%. The same way I used to do, I mean, I used it in the other ways. So you can have these stuff as the template. You don't have to do them again and again. Now let's move to the next step. Next step is going to be our working for our data. Now we have to do the linear regression. Again, your sklearn has the class. So I'm going to say from sklearn dot linear model import linear regression it's a class so i'm going to create an object for this linear regression is equal to linear regression as in class now we are ready we will fit the linear regression how do i say to the data i'm going to say linear regression dot fit i have to just pass my training data so let me say x train comma y train so this is a line i would like to explain now, this is where we are making the machine to learn. I repeat, this is where we are making the machine to learn. This is how the machine will learn. 
I'm telling the machine, hey, you use this X train, which is going to be the independent variable. And you use this Y train, which is going to be the dependent on the independent variable. And then you test it. You learn the pattern. I'm asking it to learn the pattern. Okay, now once it has learned the pattern, I can ask it to do the prediction. Okay, now let's do the prediction. How can I make it do the prediction? Let's call y pred, which is the prediction, is equal to linear regression dot predict. underscore test okay now we can print x and y together okay we can print x and y together for prediction okay now we will before we do that we will try to first look at the prediction we will try to first look at the prediction okay so we will say print Y underscore red followed by print Y underscore test. So it's going to be predict the test of with X. It's going to learn by using the train. It's going to predict the test, which I'm storing it in Y pred. And I'm printing both Y, the prediction, and the testing. Now let's save it. Let's execute. The capital Y. Let's have a look. Look at that. These are the prediction that it has made. Let's see if it's good or bad, whether at least it's close. So the prediction that it has made is 75,074, wherein it's 88,000. 91, here it's not bad, 98. Here, look at that, it's pretty much close. 62, but then the actual is 63. Here, there is a vast difference, 81, but it is 93. You can see here, it's 67, 61, not bad. 89.91, not bad at all. So you have three close values. Did you understand? So we, what we have done, we have done certain imports. Then we have split the data because this particular data does not require any pre-processing. And we have created a linear regression. Now what is linear regression? Linear regression is given by the equation y is equal to b0 plus b1 into x y that is just one independent variable and one dependent variable so we go for simple linear regression to achieve the result so it's just simple linear regression you might have learned it in mathematics like this y is equal to b plus mx i hope you remember this equation somewhere any questions did you try did it work for you Any questions, people? Thank <laughs> you. 
Okay. Sure. So now, since we have said this, we could do a prediction for one particular experience too. How can we do it is what we're going to see next. Okay, after that, we will see how we can plot it in a chart and have a view on and we can also get a chart like this. So is that possible using just Python is what we're going to see next. Okay, and you get rid of these two. I'm going to comment it. I'm going to say a new array. Okay, so let's call this X check. Is equal to, I'm saying it's an array. Inside that, I just have one single value. Let's say some 18 years of experience, which is not available, 18.2. My years of experience only come till 10. So 18.2. It's my years of experience. Let's ask it to predict for that. So you can cut and I'll put it here. I'm going to predict it for this. X check. So let's print Y underscore red. Now I'm not using the test data. I just tested it. Now I'm going to make a prediction. So this is the real prediction. That's the use of ML, correct? So if I have, let's say we are working in the HR department, we want somebody saying a demanding salary of one particular amount. You want to check whether uh, the person is worth for so much salary or not. So just by giving the basic salary details, a uh, number of years of experience, we can predict what would be approximately the salary that can be given for a candidate. Doesn't that sound interesting? So just on experience, we can predict the salary that could be given for one particular candidate based on the experience level. That's our first prediction. If you want to plot it in a chart with the X prediction and Y prediction, you could do so. So let's just go ahead and do the chart too. For the chart, first we require to import and library. Import matlab at plot matplotlib dot python plot we will call it as plt the plotting now we would use that to do the plotting so we'll call plt dot scatter okay why scatter guys scatter chart usually is used to show the correlation between two different things for example a person's height map to his shoe size does it be does it have any correlation you want to see you could use a scatter chart so we're going to see the correlations now so what is x x is x train this is going to be y train So you could pass the colors to beautify your chart. So I'm going to say color of X train and Y train is going to be red. So that is the first one. We could say plt dot show 
show us a method which will show you the chart. Let's save it. Let's execute. Where do you see the chart if you are working here? You can see it in plots. Look at that. So it has plotted the X train for us. Do you see that? It has plotted the X train for us. So what do you do? You import and then you do the chart. Now we could improve the chart by plotting a line for Y train or a prediction against this. How do you do that? PLT dot plot in the same chart. What are you going to ask for? Extreme, comma, the linear regression dot predict. What have we predicted? The extreme. values so we are predicting with the x train values and uh, to differentiate we could call the color is equal to green okay now let's save and let's execute look at that that's how my prediction goes i hope it made sense so that is how the linear regression prediction goes you can see these are the salary slabs these are the years of experience and these are the x train and y train values this is x train versus x train prediction any questions guys so if you are wanting to say guy three is it not possible to do the chart um in my, i mean google collab well we can do a chart in google collab you don't have to do anything else you just say file new notebook it's just doing a new notebook that's the whole code that i need remember we need to open the data here i've not uploaded the file so i need to upload the file here that's my salary data i need to copy the path and i have to paste the path here that's my salary data and i have the whole code written right here so let's execute it. Dot values. Yes, we. There we are. So now let's execute. Hmm. Where is the file? Still saying file not found.
Let's try a new one. File, new notebook. So that's my new notebook. Open the file editor. the file okay so that's my csv file the code i just copy the whole stuff and paste it here the only change we need to do is copy path and paste it here should be good to go yes so you can see the predicted value and the chart being plotted even in google Colab. okay so the choice is yours you can work in anywhere you want so you could upload the file there and then you could use google Colab to um work with the file right here or you could be using spiders so don't don't just think Gayatri you're using spiders so you view the chart i'm using google collab i'm not able to view the chart it's pretty simple that have uh, uploaded the whole file everything is all done so you could be doing your own prediction you could be plotting it against the chart and uh, the effect of using um ml so we did a couple of steps what we did in the pre-processing so in the pre-processing we did major working right so we, we we knew how to import the libraries we saw how to import the data then we worked with missing values we have no missing values literally here but then we used an encoder we don't have any categorical data here so we've not done any encoding and then we uh we but then we did the split of train and test which we uh, learned and then we did a simple prediction of salary now the next step is going to be very similar but then i have another data here this is going to be multiple linear regression we are going to prepare the data a little bit for this date this one but then first let me explain this data to you this is the spinning on each of the category so it's labeled data again just reiterating whatever we did in the morning so we are still doing supervised learning how can you say that you can see that we have labeled data. We have labeled data. So the pattern could be read from the label what we are giving it. So this is the amount spent on research and development. This is the amount that is spent on administration. This is the amount that is spent on marketing. This is a state in which the office is present. And this is the profit. So now you want to predict the profit based on R&D, administration, marketing expenses, and the state in which you're going to put up an office. Now, if you are an investor, you want to predict whether this investment will give you enough profit or not. You want to predict if this investment will give you enough profit or not. All right. Now we are going to use the steps, the templates, whatever we already have. You're just going to copy paste those stuffs because we don't want to redo everything. But then uh, you can see that there is a state here we have to work on the data but there are no missing values though so we don't have to bother about it 
the zero here is not a missing value the zero indicates that there is no marketing exp expense in that particular place the r d and the marketing expense is zero in that particular place it is not a missing value so we have this data so the first step is uploading the data all right we would start it but then we would be learning a lot of other things um later on so we will just save this here say file open i'm just opening on a file new file i'll just save this as um and then python that's going to be my python file tool pretty much you can copy all this just change the name of the file all right that's going to be the name of my file let's print x and s is extra save all right you can see that it is uh, let's clear all this <clears throat> you can see that it is reading the data don't forget the values you can see the difference now you can see that it is picked up as an array tuple because but dot values just the conversion otherwise the data would be pretty much raw all right so that's my dot values effect so we have taken the data but then what is this data and why are we working on a data like this so as i told you already last time we just had one independent variable and one dependent variable but then now how many independent variables we have r and d administration marketing state so we have four independent variables and then one dependent variable so how do we plot it what does it mean so we are going to go for multiple linear regression how do we say multiple linear regression i would say y is equal to b0 plus b1 into x1 plus b2 into x2 so on and so forth until bn into xn so I could be having N contributing factors for my prediction. So that is how I'm going to make the regression. So that is how I'm going to make the regression. All right. So first of all, before we start from here, is it linear? Is it linear? So how do you check? You check the linearity first. Yes, this is looking linear. Our data, it's looking linear. All right then the next step you check so there are few checks you will have to make or you could even call it assumptions First is the linearity. Second is
uh, pretty complicated spelling. Okay. Otherwise, it's also called as um, homo. T of variance. It's pretty much um, statistics. Okay, so what is homo homo sesquia, homo sesquidacity? It means that all your random variables, which are the independent variables, have to have the same finite variance okay it has to have the same finite variance that is if i look at it this and this have the same finite variance okay all these have the same finite variance so it vary it, it does vary it does vary in the same way it's not heterogeneous it is homogeneous. That's what you mean. Okay. The third thing is multivariate normality. So in other words, just normality. But if it is not there, you can still arrive on the normality by doing feature scaling. Okay. And you should also have lack of or lack of multi multicollinearity. Um, that means um, the independent variables are correlated. They may be even inversely correlated. You know the correlation we were talking when we were spoke when we spoke about the scatter chart. They may be even inversely correlated, but there should be correlation between the independent variable. If it is having a lack of correlation, then your data is not linear. So you have to check this and generally, otherwise also you will have to check for error-free data. So you will have to check for linearity. You will have to check for homogeneity, variance, normality. And there is no lack of multicorrelality. The reason is if it is not correlated, you cannot work with the data in linear regression. So once you've checked of all this, then we can talk about um, how you can predict the data. Okay, now we need to select the columns for prediction. Let's have a See, I have one, two, three, four columns for predicting just finite. It has only 50 records. In real time, let's say you are doing a prediction for whether a customer would buy a car or not. They have given you one lakh records. Okay, they have given one lakh records. So how will you make the prediction? What all do you consider? Now, if you have earlier, we had no problem. We just had one independent variable and one dependent variable. That way, it never arrives that whether we should make a choice of independent or dependent variable. But then now, since we are having multiple uh, independent variables, how will you make a choice? Come on, guys, open up. How would you make a um, decision of what to take and what not to take? You have a certain factor that you need to discuss with your probability. Okay. So now let's take, you call the p-value. Okay. Have you heard of it? The p-value. Okay. Let's imagine you're going to make a toss. A coin. can be head or it can be now you are uh, thinking that um, it's a good coin if the coin is correct so now you are making the first toss so you are making a toss one let's imagine that it's a two so what is the probability that it should be a toss what is your prediction should be 0.5 
correct to be 0.5. Now let's make the second chart. Again, it's same. So what is the probability now? What will you think? Already it was. So you would think it's 0.25, right? 60% of the earlier. The chart three, again it's scale. Now you become very suspicious, but then still there's a p value, the probability value. It's point not six. Correct the chart four. And for the chart five, the still the scale. Now, for the final task, you will believe that the coin is not proper, it just has scale. Am I right? Am I right? So, you would think the coin has no heads at all, it just has the tail. Why are we talking about this? So you need to set the p value to understand whether your prediction is right or wrong. Why are we talking about this? Based on this p value, you will decide whether to include a column or not to include the column. Generally, we set the p value logically. We will set it as that's called the alpha. It's called 0 0.5. 0 0.05. So below which we never go. That means when you reach here, you call it quits. You don't go any further because it makes no sense. No? The probability is very less. Looks like the result is tampered. So how will you go and tell your management? Let's say your manager is asking to make you a prediction whether this particular customer will be a potential customer or not. So how will you make the prediction? You cannot go on forever, no? Go on iterating, 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 iterating. How long will you iterate? So you feel something has gone wrong. How will you tell your management? You cannot tell them, no, I feel I have a bad feel about it. How will you go and say you have a bad feel about it with a number? Only numbers can speak. So how will you tell it in numbers? You say, okay, the alpha is below 0 0.05. Now I feel this. This particular column is not required at all for prediction because this particular column is misleading your prediction. Okay, this particular column is misleading your prediction. You need to tell that. You need to tell that. So for that, you will pick up the p-value. So based on the p-value, you have different techniques for column selection. So we call this as building the model data. Okay, why we require to build the data? Because all independent variables are not important. So now let's again come back to this line. Before that, I thought this is the right context for me to introduce you to something else. Have you heard of this site? Kaggle. It's actually a Google site, but it is. Um, you can see that this is uh, my site. So you can see here you have a lot of competition that keeps coming up, and you have a lot of courses for ML which are lined up for you. So you can pick up these courses from here. Most of the courses are free of cost. You can see that it has Python introduction to machine learning, intermediate, how do you visualize your data, pandas separately. We spoke about feature, right? So feature learning, DL, all the stuff are available here. Okay, it's called Kaggle, Kaggle. And then you can do go for competitions. So you can see these are the competitions which are launched by this site. Okay, here if you search for the competitions that you are wanting, so these are the prize money. So once the competition is done, you can search it here. 
Now, one famous competition that has been going for some time. You can see it is still open. Do you see that? Okay. It is called machine learning from disaster. This has the data for Titanic. You can see the train and test. The CSV file is already available here. So this is the passenger ID, and um, you can see the columns in which the pa the data is being given. So whether they survived or not, the class in which they were traveling, their name. So this is the passenger data. So this is the column that you are predicting, whether they survived or they did not survive. This is the column that you were predicting. So now, will you pick up the passenger ID to check if the passenger has survived or not? What is your guess? The reason I'm asking you this is because not all independent variables are important. Not all independent variables are important for prediction. So if you are given a huge data, you need to pick up those particular independent variables which are important for your predictions. There are a lot of um, uh, techniques for this. So all in, all the way, it's very simple. You put everything in, or you have backward elimination. You could have forward elimination. Okay, and then you can have bi-directional elimination. Core comparison. Okay. So usually they pick up bi-directional elimination because it uses both backward and forward internally. All in is just an, um, a compulsion when your company says, no, no, I've given you all the uh, values, you have to go with it because the prediction would be very, very great. If you are adding independent variables that are not correlating with the given context. So you will have to think about all in, okay? Now, um, if you have prior knowledge in that particular domain, then you can make a choice and you feel all the variables are important. That is when you would go for all in. Backward elimination, so it keeps the p-level. So that's what we were talking about, the p-value here. It sets the p-value and then it gets it to find out if the p-value is greater than the given value, then it goes for that particular column. In forward elimination, it will just take um, simple linear regression with the lowest p value and then it will keep one by one. It will keep trying one model after another model. So it will add one particular variable after another <coughs> and then decide which to have. In bidirectional, it will set one um, p value to keep and one p value to quit. So for quitting, it will go for backward. For keeping, it will go for forward. So we use both the direction. Okay, score comparison is like um, it's very uh, all possible models, but then it's just like then probability. For example, if you have 10 columns, it's very rare case that you use score comparison. You need to add one by one, one, two columns, three columns, four columns, and then again change the probability. Um, what is 10 probability? So it would be, if I'm not wrong, 1,023 possibilities of models that you can have. Uh, backward elimination, if you are using Python, sklearn will help you to do backward elimination automatically. So you don't have to uh, do anything explicitly. That's why I'm not going into the algorithm in detail. If you are using any other language like R, 
then you might have to do the backward elimination algorithm by yourself even in python you can go for the algorithm by yourself but it's not required python gives you a way of having an algo at automatically does this to you so we don't have to do it explicitly All right. Now let's jump into the code of multiple. Um, we are going to do multiple linear regression. Most of the code we will copy paste, so we don't have to duplicate the code. We have this done. Now we need to do the column transfer people. Let's have a look. I will print text. You can look at the result. Here, my result has the state. State is a uh, category data. We already know that we cannot use the category data, and we know what to do too. So we are going to move and pick up that code. We are not going to retype anything. You can see that um, we already have this. We're going to pick up this code. From pre-processing, I'm importing one hot encoder, and then the column transfer. The column transfer, I'm giving the encoder. But one simple change: the column number is not zero. The column number is three. Let's have a look: zero, one, two, and three. So the column number is three. So that one change we have to do. Now I will remove this. Now let's save and execute. You can find that it has made the required required changes. And I want you also to note that after it has done the encoding, it will always shift it to the beginning. Did you notice it? It will always shift it to the beginning. So we have done this here. It's done. Now next is we have to flip the train and test data that we already have. It is flipping the train and test data. Again, I'm using 20% for the test and 80% for the train. Okay, I'm using 20% for the test and 80% for the train. But then now you would be wondering how we will do and uh, multiple linear regression for that we don't have to do anything new except that we i will show you how it works so now what we're going to do is we're going to simply um, call the linear regression what we did already and provide the fit the same way we gave last time so it's just going to be the same constant there is no change at all here. Since we have more than one column, automatically it will understand that it is a multiple column based linear regression. Now we will make the prediction again. So we are saying y pred is equal to linear regression dot predict of x test. Okay, we have done the prediction. Now we will check it side by side on the value. So I'm using numpy. Numpy has the print option. We'll set the print option. I want it side by side. So set the score. Option. I just want it for the level of two position, otherwise, it would be too much. Correct. You saw in the first example, you remember 
first example itself i said i'm not doing fine tuning of the code so here it will become too much so we just working with it now this is a tricky statement what i'm going to make now let me be very careful with the parentheses NT dot concatenate. That's my closure for concatenate. NT dot concatenate. I open a parenthesis. So y no locus y y underscore my predicted value. I'm going to reshape it. Reshape will help me to place it vertically. Okay. Then of y underscore spread. Comma one, the first column. Then the closure bracket. Then six comma. Now what I want to concatenate, I want to say y underscore test. Again, I'm going to call the shape. The shape for the length of y underscore f. Come out one, which is the column. Now this is the closure for the length. That is the reshape. This is the closure for the values for concatenation. I say comma one, which is the number of values, axis. I am done. I hope I've done the parenthesis right. Let's see. Let's save it and let's print it. Mm, capital Y underscore test. And there I made a mistake. There you go. So here are the first values are my predictions. The second values are the test results. So for the same, let's see how the prediction is. It is predicted 11,000 is the profit. And I write no, 1,14,000 is the profit. The original profit was 10,50, not bad. 90, 96, 75, 78, 70, 81. Here is a huge difference. So then rest of it looks pretty much close. So you can see how the prediction happened. Did you see that? So that is multiple linear polynomial, sorry, multiple linear regression. Multiple linear regression. So what have we learned? We learned how to make the prediction if we have just a simple independent variable on which our dependent variable is depending on. There's just one variable on which my variable is depending on. That is how the linear regression, simple linear regression goes. Then we saw multiple linear regression is what we are working on. In multiple linear regression, we saw how to pick up the columns, what to consider, what not to consider. And we used one more technique that we use in pre-processing. That is encoding. So we use the encoding technique. Now, if you want to make a prediction of your own for this, how will you make it? It's what we're going to see right now. So how will you make the prediction? For example, Now I will have to give x. Um, we will, remember, we will have to give the state. Let's view the data. So I think California is 1, Florida is 2, and New York is 3. So 0, 1, 2. Um, let me say this uh, California. Now I will have to give the R and the extent. Uh, 
okay then i will have to give the um, admin expense then i will have to give the marketing expense okay now let's make the prediction look at that so it's saying my profit would be 194933 you can rely on the profit because you can see the predictions last time against the actual were pretty much close so given take a, a couple of or even 10000 dollars here and there your prediction is this did that make sense to all of you you want to try it let's give you the code i cannot place the whole code so you can check out whether your prediction is working perfectly well or not people are we good so did we understand it any questions So the final one we're going to work on is an polynomial regression. So why polynomial regression? okay that was linear regression all right but then what if you have data like this Can you do a linear regression here? Linear regression is something like this. So it would here we're missing out most of the data, aren't we? So we should be making a curve. How do we do that? So it should be something like this, right? It should be something like this. to understand how the growth rate goes so that is a polynomial regression if the data is non linear then we will have to not draw a straight line because it will not fit it will not fit so but the growth seems to be still linear if you draw an equation for the polynomial regression i hope you learned it in statistics um it will be very similar to linear regression D zero plus D one into X one plus D two into X one square. So on. Uh, 
until B n into x one is into the power of that is polynomial regression because that is the curve that is n. That is polynomial regression. So still, still the coefficient which you call b1, b2, b3 are present in linear format. Sometimes it might be addressed as linear regression too. Now we will quickly see an example for polynomial regression. Again, I have a data which is already done for polynomial regression. Let's pick up the data. So this is position wise salary. So here you can see there is a position, there is a salary. Okay. Now uh, there is another thing, another reason why I would show this data to you because um, if you see the position is not required. We don't have to, though it's a categorical data, you don't have to work with it because the level indicates the position automatically. So you could just work with level and salary. You don't have to work with the position explicitly. Now let's move. We will pick up this file. But before that, we will make another new file. We will save it. Third file we are working today. We are going to make the third prediction. Pretty much rest of it is going to be the same. But we won't be requiring all the data and also we need to change the file name. Decision salaries. We need to change the file name. Okay. Uh, and also the columns is very important. Here it's going to be Starting from the first column, not from the zero column. That's when we change. So we are done. We will print X. All right, then. So we have X ready. We could be doing a linear regression with the train and the test. So We will just split it. We don't need the encoder. We're going to call the linear regression. We're going to call the linear regression. We will mark the chart. I hope you remember how to do the chart. We did it already here. Same thing we're going to do here too. All right, we will save it. Let's execute it. Please look at the chart. Do you think the predictions are right? Do you think the predictions would be right? I didn't need to think of the F. Do you think the predictions would be right? Let's have a look. Look at my chart. Do you see the curve? So when you try linear regression and you feel your prediction is not right, that is when you go for polynomial regression. So we will be doing linear regression, but before that, we would be doing a teeny bit of polynomial regression. So let's do that. From sklearn dot preprocessing import polynomial feature. So we have imported it. Polynomial feature is equal to the polynomial features. We need to give the curves degree, right? We're going to say degree is equal to two. And then we will go. For a new x, we 
polynomial teacher dot fit underscore transform. We're just going to provide x. Not the x string. We don't. We're not splitting the data that trace here. We're just giving x. Okay. We're just giving x. All right. Now what we're going to do is we already have the linear regression. Instead of putting the x train and the y train, we're going to give the x mu to the degree and the y. Now we can go for the chart. Let's see how it works. So I'm going to plot it against x and y. Against the x mu. X against the x mu. That's it. Now let's save it. Let's execute it. I want you to look at the line. That's more fitting line than my degree, but still the fit is not proper. Let's improve the degree. Three. That's the cube. You remember? We have a degree. So we need to provide it. Let's check it out. Better. Let's try four. There you go, the perfect fit. So you can see now we have trained our data or algorithm to read the perfect record. You can see the degree with the degree four, it is perfect. So it's almost giving us a perfect fit. Now when you make the prediction, your predictions will be all right. Now let's try to make the prediction. X new with the degree four. So you can provide the new one to make the prediction, which should work perfectly all right. 